Hi, welcome back to Mechanical PE Exam Prep. This is 6-Minute Solutions, Problem 6. A compressor's piston travels to 20% of its original volume. It is used to compress 70 degree air from atmospheric pressure to 100 psi gauge. Assuming that the air behaves as an ideal gas, the temperature of the compressed air is most nearly what? And they've given us a hint for an ideal gas, the relationship between pressure, volume, and temperature is that relationship. Let's just jot down what we've been given. So if the compressor's piston travels to 20% of its original volume, that means the ratio of the volume after the compression, V2, as compared with the volume before the compression, V1, is 20% or 0.2. We also know the temperature of the air starting out is 70 degrees Fahrenheit. So we'll say T1 is 70 degrees F. And we know that the pressure is initially atmospheric pressure, so P1 equals 14.7, but that after the compression, it's 100 PSI G. And when you see G, warning bell should go off in your head because we need absolute pressures, so we have to add back in the atmospheric pressure. So that's 114.7 absolute. And then the thing they wanna know is the temperature of the air after the compression, so T2. So basically in this hint, they've given us the formula to use. And since we have most of this information, it's pretty much plug and chug. But I think it's worth just taking a minute to go back and say, why is this the case? This relationship really stems from PV equals MRT. So if you remember from chemistry, PV equals MRT. If I were to solve this to get M and R by themselves, then MR would equal PV over T. And R is a universal constant, so that's not changing and m is the mass of whatever air is in that piston and none of the air is escaping or no new air is being added so it's the exact same mass the mass isn't changing either or even if you had done pv equals nrt then n is the number of moles which again is not changing so if the left side is constant then the right side must also be constant so pv over t equals a constant and that's why we can write this relationship. We can change any two of these three variables, but the third one has to change in order to hold this ratio constant. Okay, so with that we have P1V1 over T1 equals P2V2 over T2, and the thing we're looking for is T2. So I'm gonna algebraically solve this to get T2 by itself. We have P2 over P1 times V2 over V1 times T1. And now we can plug in the numbers. So both pressure units are in PSIA. And then the ratio of V2 to V1, we don't actually know the volumes, we just know that it was reduced to 20% of its original volume. So we, we have the value of this ratio. And now the temperature is given to us as 70 degrees, but it has to be in absolute scale. So we have to add 460 Rankin to 70 degrees Fahrenheit. So we actually have to use 530 degrees Rankin. And if you plug that in your calculator, we get 827 degrees Rankin, and then you can subtract 460 from that, and that equals 367 degrees Fahrenheit, and we have a choice for 370. So answer D is the best. See you in the next video.